Cisco is one of the world's most known brands and is Fortune's number one company to work for. But over the last year, they are failing though, and they are down almost 24%. They were recently downgraded by some analysts due to potential headwinds, but delivered a strong earnings call where they beat on both top and bottom line, and they issued strong guidance on the coming fiscal year. There's even some great catalysts for Cisco, such as the coming moon mission by NASA, where they are developing new communication technologies. With that said, let's take a closer look at Cisco. And you can see they are trading at a PE non-gap forward ratio of 12.82, which is 16% below the five-year average of just over 15. So that is already looking pretty decent. If you scroll down to the price to book ratio, which is 4.11, and you can see it's 18% below the five-year average of just over five. So also looking pretty nice. Cisco offers a dividend yield of 3.36%, a payout ratio of just around 45%, and a five-year growth rate of 6.4%, and that comes with a dividend growth rate of 10 consecutive years. If we look at the numbers behind, you can see here in the financial statement that the revenue is growing, albeit it's a bit slow. In July 2018, they had $49 billion in revenue, and in July 22, they had 51.5. So not too much, but still, it is growing. If we scroll down to the net income and ignore the weird number in 2018, you can see from July 2019, it had $11.6 billion in net income, and they've only managed to grow that to $11.8 billion in July 22. So it's a very slow growth for the net income. But if we jump into the cash flow statement, you can see here in cash flow operations, they are doing really nice because you can see at 2018, 13.6, 13.2. So pretty steady they had some good years during COVID, but let's look at the capital expenditures which are really low just under one billion dollars every year and even below half a billion dollars in 2022 so they are generating a massive amount of cash jumping into the final one which is the balance sheet you can see here in cash and short-term investments they have seven billion dollars in cash and 12 billion dollars in short-term investments and if we go down to the debt you can see the total debt is 9.5 billion that means they have a net debt of 9.7 billion as a negative number so it means if they wanted they could pay out the whole debt tomorrow so they prefer to have the cash on hand and they probably have a pretty good interest rate on the debt and if we look here at the total shares outstanding they had 4.5 billion shares outstanding and they have decreased that from 2018 to 2022 to 4.1 so they are also doing a lot of buybacks that was how some of the numbers behind look, but let's take a look at the intrinsic value to get an idea whether or not Cisco is over or undervalued. And to do that, we are using our models and I've actually made a new one, which is a free cash flow valuation. We'll look at it a bit later. The first one here we have is Graham's advised valuation model and this gives us an intrinsic value of $39. And if we scroll down on to the next one, which is the discounted cash flow analysis, I've applied a growth rate of 3%, which I think is very very conservative pair, but i think it's going to be maybe a slow year for cisco so i'd rather be a bit conservative now and i still get a fair value of 57 dollars next one is the dividend discount model which gives us an intrinsic value of three percent and the multiples valuation gives us a stock price of almost 100 dollars which is a bit high but again it is based on other companies so it's a bit difficult to always compare them directly then the new one, the free cash flow valuation, it gives us an intrinsic value of $35. Before we get into the summary, if you've come so far, thank you so much for watching this video and please like the video and subscribe to support the channel. So let's jump into the summary. You can see we have our five models that is being averaged down here to the average intrinsic value of $52 with the current price being at $45, we get an average current discount of around 14%. If we apply a margin of safety of 20%, it means the acceptable buy price gets around 42%. And if we change the margin of safety to 15, we already have an acceptable buy price that is pretty close to the current price. So this is a company that I'm looking to start a position in. I would really like to get in in the low 40s, around the 42, 43%. So I'm hoping it will drop in the coming weeks to start a position. Let me know down in the comments if this is a company you are interested in, and if not, I'd love to hear as well. Thanks once again for watching.